Alrighty folks, welcome back to another episode of Close to Broke. My name is Karen and today we are currently in my car and I have a very special episode for you guys today. We're going to be peeling back the curtain of poker. Speaking of curtains, got a sunshade and we're going to be talking about the nitty, the gritty, the things that almost no poker player ever puts into actual money, dollar signs, and that is, can you still make money make, playing poker and what are those figures looking like? Today, I have a perfect example of somebody that's right down the middle, what I think a lot of you guys will fall under the category of, which is weekend warriors or poker hobbyists or people that are looking to almost subsidize their current income with a little bit of passive income from poker. Or I guess it isn't passive, but you get what I'm getting at. Anyways, I'm joined with Mike Daniels. He is my editor. He sees me and all the imperfections that I am as a poker player, but Want to get into him. Mike, what are the stakes that you're currently playing? Uh, I play one, two, one, three, and then sometimes dabble around in two, five. Nice. And uh, when did you start playing poker? I started playing poker about five to six years ago, but I really started to take it really seriously about two and a half years ago. All right. And then the big question, the meat and the potatoes. What was your 2023 looking like? Was it profitable? Was it break even or did you lose? So I did not win. I was not a profitable player. Um, I didn't have, I was not a profitable player. No, um, I don't play so much. Um, and because I don't play a lot, I don't get a lot of practice in. Therefore, I don't have a lot of, you know, kind of wherewithal and stuff. So punts and bad luck and all this stuff so no i was not profitable but we're on track to hopefully right that wrong i love that so if you had to pick one or two things what do you think is going to allow you to right that wrong this year what what can you do to improve your game and improve your chances that you believe to being a profitable player this year so i think at least for me everybody is different but recognizing what your leak is l-e-a-k recognizing what your leak is um whether that's you know certain types of betting habits or whatever my biggest leak is leaving the table uh at the right time um there are times when i either stay at the table too long or i don't give myself enough of a chance um but the biggest culprit it's not it's not the not giving myself enough of a chance it's actually staying at the table for too long I can be down in a session and then claw my way back up and climb my way back to a at least even or maybe even a small profit and I won't leave and that's a huge issue. So recognizing when to fold them, when to hold them and when to get the hell out of there is a really important uh, a really important aspect of this game. Yeah, and I think the one thing I'll add, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't think we said it. Mike definitely plays this game seldomly. He gets out when he gets a chance. So although technically he might not have been a profitable player last year, I think he's right there or really close. And there's a good chance that that number can be skewed just simply because he didn't put enough time in. Alrighty, ladies and gentlemen, here we go. We're currently joined by a fan favorite, Thomas Back, my British friend and a longtime professional poker player. One of the better players that I probably have on my contact list. So we're going to ask the same questions to Tom. Tom, what are the current stakes that you're playing consistently? So current stakes are playing consistently. So I'm in the UK. So I'm playing a lot of online um, around about the 5, 10 um, to 10, 20 sort of region. I play a lot of PLO as well on app games as well at the minute. So, yeah. PLO, okay. And one. how yeah. long have you been a professional poker player? So it's coming up to my 10th year now. Wow. And throughout that, it's been a lot of playing, staking, and coaching, which has kept it quite fresh. Um, and this is like the first sort of content creation with you that, that I'm doing, so enjoying it. Nice. And um, in those 10 years, did you ever have a year where you did not make money? Not a full year. However, definitely verging on almost a year. So we're talking like, let's just say six to, six to eight months of a downswing. For okay. Sure. You, um, it would mean a lot to the viewers, but even if you couldn't say last year, can you pick out a year, good, bad, in the middle, just a full year for transparency's sake, what you made, and if you could, how many hours you played. For so it's like, it, in one continuous year, let's just say when I was starting out at 5.5, five, I think making anywhere between 
10 to 15k per month at, at 5 5 is like is like definitely achievable nowadays wow. it might be slightly lower just because the games are nowadays, tougher harder to get again, into really good juicy big games that are obviously still really good Exactly. And that coupled with the uh, sorry, uh, that coupled with the responsible shot taking. So I'm assuming uh, when you had a couple of good sessions in a row, and the softest game in the in the room was a five ten, you weren't going to prevent yourself from playing that. So, so it's, it's a couple of things. But at the time, ten ten thousand in a month was very reasonable for the hours you were putting in. So I think to kind of piggyback and wrap it all up at the end of what you said there was is that you want to stay within poker. You know, that's obviously something you've built for yourself. But I think what you provided us, the viewers, that I wasn't even really considering or even thought about was the actual end goal. So, like, what is the what is the goal for you? What if somehow you are able to make poker a profession? What if somehow you make the effort, you put in the work, and somehow you're seeing the gains on gains on gains on gains, right? Then what? You know, like, are you going to play poker till you're 80? The game might pass you by at some point. You know what I mean? the game might just evolve into something that you weren't expecting. So I think Tom did a did a great thing by giving us hope on the other end of the spectrum. So big shout out to him. Can I just say one more thing? Yeah, of course, one of course. Thing. The man that loves walking walks further than the man that loves the destination. You're a poet and you didn't even know it. <laughs> You're breaking up, but yeah. Uh, what can I say? What can I say? Late night thoughts, man. Late night thoughts. Well, thank you so much, Tom. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you to BJ for coming on here. And uh, BJ is one of my really good friends, one of my best friends in the world. Obviously, you guys are seeing him currently on the Close to Broke uh, road trip series, and he's one of the original C2B members. He actually took a break from Close to Broke for the longest time, years actually. And the reason was, is this ties them all to my point. He was doing career-oriented things. Uh, BJ, First question off the bat here is, um, what stakes are you currently playing? What stakes do you traditionally play? Uh, two, three, five, five. Nice. And uh, recently I saw that you've made that jump to five, five, and things are seeming to pan out in your favor, which I love, obviously. But uh, talk to me a little bit about when you became a professional poker player. I guess the right word is semi-professional, where you were supplementing income annually by playing poker. Yeah. Um... Okay, so this was seven years ago now. And if you don't mind uh, sharing a little bit of transparency, do you know about how much you made po uh, playing poker last year and how many hours you played? So last year in cash games, I made about 4,000, a little over 4,000. Nice. I only played 42 sessions, and I think that's like maybe... Maybe three to five hours a session? Yeah, three to five hours a session. Nice. So you ended up carving out a really honest living, and, and I don't want to speak for you, but from what I remember as a friend, you were mostly playing 2-3 last year? Mostly 2-3. So, I mean, that's seven big blinds plus an hour uh, if you're playing 1-2 and 2-3 over 40. Like, you're like 32 an hour, 30, Yeah, 32 an hour is awesome. At 2-3, that means you're winning at 10 big blind an hour. So obviously small sample size, but that's exactly the point that I'm trying to drive home. Uh, to kind of piggyback on that question, obviously you're a profitable player, winning over 10 big blinds an hour in the games you were playing, even more so doing it in California where if you did play home games and even in casino games, you're getting raked up the ass. Uh, how does it feel knowing that you were able to do that and play uh, and have a full-time job? But more importantly, what would it have felt like for you to play poker solely and rely on that solely for your income? Poker, I think, would be very stressful. I mean, it's... it's Definitely something that you would have to commit um, a good portion of your life to studying and playing, and then obviously the, the emotional toll that comes with it, um, you know, and losing and down uh, would be a lot. That's exactly the point I've been trying to drive home is that it's. In the perfect world, not having a boss, these things are also wonderful. And being a small business owner, it's the biggest benefit of that is not having to answer questions to people. And it's tough for me to tell you to not strive for that. But in reality, I try to be responsible and you want to mitigate these ridiculous risks in your life. And I think like I've wanted to kind of drive that point home is that when you're ready, when you've built a big bankroll, you've seen the prosperity year over year happen, maybe making that full-time commitment makes sense when you're able to play big enough, the bankroll safe enough.
But I think in your case, I mean, how uh, $4,000 is nothing to like shy away at, especially at 10 big blinds an hour. You were winning enough money to cover all of your poker trips. Anytime you, you know, I think you went up north a couple of times. So being able to cover those trips. Yeah, you were with the WSMP. Vegas. I mean, this that's exactly the point. Having a little bit of extra change, so be it, but able to kind of do something that I know you love and I know that we all love. Being able to do that is the best thing and being able to do it profitably is awesome and not having to solely worry about that, being your sole income, I'm sure is something that'll alleviate the stress from your life. So thank you so much for being so transparent with your numbers. It, it's obviously what we all wanna hear. Uh, I guess to kind of put a wrap on it, at the end of this, what are your goals for this year, especially now that you're kind of dabbling in the 5-5 five, five realm and um, now that you've been able to free up a little more time with your schedule, you're still working obviously, but you're able to kind of you know, finagle the schedule to allow yourself to play poker. What are your goals for this year? Uh, my goals are actually to play more tournaments. I want to kind of have uh, a steady schedule of playing tournaments. I think there's more opportunity there where, like, you know, you risk less, but you uh, obviously the, the reward is uh, pretty big. Um, with cash games, it's just the grind is, is really exhausting. Um, it's really tough, but uh, I do expect to dedicate a lot more time to the I love that. Well, I like that you also put those things into perspective. Didn't say like, hey, I went for, I won 4000 last year. I want to win 100000 this year. It's all perspective. You just want to get in the table, play, because with your skill set, you're going to make money as long as you're at the table. So I love that. Uh, big thank you again to BJ for coming on here and being so transparent. Uh, good luck to him and the rest of the people that joined the video today. Uh, but let's sort over to the outro and talk a little bit more about that. Kieran the Cowboy is back and we want to talk a little bit about what my point and what I'm trying to drive home is. People always ask me, hey, can you make money playing poker? Is there still an opportunity to be profitable? Are the games good? There's so many different answers to the question, but let me give you guys the one, the only one that matters to me, the right answer. In my opinion, I think the only way to really make the poker thing work for the time being is keeping the job that you currently have and supplementing your annual income with steady poker play. Making the effort to become a great poker player, seeing the ability first, and then making the idea or making the effort to really go for gusto, I think that's the safest bet and what I think will pay the best dividends. If you are maybe in a big upswing and you're thinking, hey, let me just shoot for it, shoot for the stars, I'm all about dream chasing, for God's sakes. I made a YouTube channel about my dumbass playing poker. So I get it and I'll never shun your dreams or wanna push them down. But what I can't do in good faith is give you bad advice. And I think the good advice in this example is making the effort to get great at poker, seeing continuous gains, continuous prosperity end over year, year over end or whatever, and then making that effort or making that real big, big jump into playing poker full time. I think that's a perfect case scenario, but I think the best case scenario and the right answer to this equation is obvious. Keep that job, supplement your income playing poker, maybe Friday, Saturday, Sunday. I can almost guarantee that you'll make more money keeping your regular job and playing when the games are good, when that's Friday, Saturday, Sunday, instead of trying to grind out a living six days a week in a bad game. So that's my personal opinion. I'd love to hear what you guys think. So big thank you to everyone that came on to today's video. They mean so much to me and thank you for them for being transparent because I know it's not really easy to do that. So until then, I love you guys so much. Stay happy, stay healthy, more importantly, we're good at the tables, y'all. Deuces.